invite you to get to know the regional program of prevention and control of deforest illegal deforestation and forest fires in the Brazilian Amazon. This program will be created after a planning process of the Governor's Consortium started in 2019. I would like to greet Eugenio Pantoja, who is over there, and he was one of the supporters of this initiative. In 2021, we took a second step with the Green Restoration Program. When Governor Dino took over, the Consortium of Governors. This program had several axes, and one of those axes had the development of the regional program of prevention of con and control of illegal deforestation and forest fires in the Amazon. One of the developers was Mr. Pierre Guinat, the ambassador of France, and he is going to be the first person that I'm going to invite to take part in this panel. Ms. Diagena, are you listening to the translation? Okay. Okay. Ms. Diagena, are you following the translation? Ms. Diagena, are you following the translation? The government of France was one of the earliest supporters of the Consortium of Governors. And this product, it's uh, the most relevant result that we have that in our partnership. How you see the contribution of, of the international cooperation for the next few years in terms of the, the maintenance of the sustainable development of the Amazon? Uh, as, and I'm going to continue in uh, in English to thank you and uh, for the invitation and the consortium of uh, governors at the same time. We have a cooperation that has started uh, three years ago uh, when we signed a, a roadmap between the government of France and the consortium of uh, governors in order to uh, uh, together try to have an intelligent conservation of uh, rainforest based on cooperation. Uh, at the time, the environment was not very favorable to uh, this kind of uh, agreement. Uh, I'm talking, of course, of the crisis of COVID that just erupted at, the, at this moment, and uh, it interrupted uh, the, the work we had planned in the, in the roadmap. But the fact is, we have tried to, to build on the sanitary crisis to work with local communities and autochthonous groups in the Amazon in order to build together in favor of uh, the forest. Now the time has come to renew our cooperation and to go on with the roadmap. So um, first of all, I would be uh, very glad to continue the conversation we have started uh, three years ago in Madrid and invite the consortium to visit us in uh, France in order to uh, try to uh, build uh, a new kind of cooperation with the French uh, Agency of uh, Development uh, IFD, which is uh, the, the arm of our cooperation in the region. Uh, we want to do that uh, for a number of reasons. First of all, because President Macron is very committed. Uh, we created the Alliance for the Conservation of Rainforest, which uh, I am coordinating. And this is a, a reason for us to have a cooperation for the Amazon Basin, for the Congo Basin, and for Southeast Asia. And uh, so we have a whole uh, uh, vision of uh, why it's important for uh, the planet for the conservation of, uh, of rainforest. That's the first thing. The second thing is that we are neighbors. And uh, France and Brazil share a border. And uh, already how armed forces and police are working together in order to uh, try to, to, to avoid that the border be an issue 
uh, between our countries, but on the contrary, be a factor that we can build on uh, in order to have a better cooperation. And finally, we have to, to have an international, um, uh, we have to, to, to work together because the international environment is very difficult. There is a food crisis uh, currently in the world and our countries can help uh, give better conditions and better access to food to uh, the rest of the planet where it is needed. But this, is, this shouldn't be uh, a pretext for deforestation. On the contrary, we can have an intelligent use of the soils in order to produce better, to have uh, local communities and the uh, private sector to, to get more benefit out of the forest without uh, going against the integrity of the forest. And we should do that in the full respect of the sovereignty of the countries that have the responsibility of the plan of the forest. So uh, we want to be respectful of Brazil's uh, sovereignty and work together with those on the ground, governors, local communities, and others in order to, and including agriculture, in, uh, including in order to produce better and at the same time save our forest because we need it for the climate and for biodiversity and that's why we are here in Sharm el Sheikh today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your words. And now I would like to invite I would like to invite Governor Mauro Mendes, representing the governors of the region. Please take your seat, Governor of Mato Grosso. And our Secretary Tavira, representing the Secretary of the States. Very well. Secretary, we have here a presentation. And it will be very good if you could give us the view of the Secretary of the State, of the states that developed this product together. Very well. I am a little bit jet lagged, but uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to be with you today. I would like to greet the Governor of the State of Mato Grosso, Governor Mauro Manges. On your behalf, I would like to greet all of the authorities that are here. Uh, on behalf of my friend Maureen, I would like to greet the Secretaries of Environment who are here as well. It's a great pleasure to be here today. It's a, This is a document on which we have worked. The Consortium of Governors are, uh, is assisted by technical departments, and there is an environmental technical department that is uh, managed and it has the role of assisting the governors. This document was built by this technical department. We secretaries of environment of the Amazon, we have a forum of secretaries and this forum constitutes the technical department of the governors. This technical department guides the work of the states for the improvement of command and control in our region. I would like to present the Regional Program of Prevention and Control of Illegal Deforestation and Forest Fires in the region of Amazonia Legal. We have a strategic plan The interesting thing is, in the last 10 years, we have a rising curve. Throughout the last 10 years, we have a rising curve of deforestation in Amazon as a whole. And we have several factors that lead to this rising curve including economic, the economic factors. We have a growing economic activity, especially in commodities, with a, process, a very strong process of deindustrialization, a change in the potential of the economic balance for those commodities, and obviously a room for economic growth post-pandemic that has increased very rapidly. 
And obviously, for you to take advantage of this economic wave, you have two mechanisms. You either invest in technology to produce more in a less in a smaller period of time, or you increase the area of production, pre predicting exports and an increase in consumption. So this economic wave increases the pressure on the environment. So the first thing that the secretaries are dealing with are not only environmental issues. Nobody is deforesting the Amazon because they want to or because they feel good. These are economic choices about the use of the land. And the environmental secretaries have the commitment of ordering this growth because growing economically is good and compatibilizing this economic growth with the protection of the forest is the biggest challenge that we have as secretaries. So we cannot demonize the economic growth and we cannot consider that conserving the forest is not something important. And this is the challenge that we have when we launch the regional program of prevention and control to the illegal deforestation and forest fires. The key strategy is integrating the efforts to control the vectors of deforestation. We have a lot of pressure happening at the edges of our state where there is a void of joint efforts by the states. We need to share infrastructures, like uh, we have a lack of efforts on the borders between Rondônia and Mato Grosso, between Acre and Rondônia, we should use those efforts more efficiently. This is one of the goals that we have. Maybe we shouldn't have one. Maybe we shouldn't have one plane in each state. We should have a centralized plane and the border, that should be a better strategy to fight deforestation in the south of Amazonas. That is the perspective that we are adopting. This work has integrated, has integrated the sectoral chamber of the environment, the committee of the firefighters of the nine states and the sectoral chamber of public security. So there is a commitment of all of those chambers for, for us to reduce the illegal deforestation in the Amazon. We have a few lines of action. The first and the second one are the creation of an environmental management system, integrating data collection and technology to uh, have the best fi uh, fighting technologies. We don't have only to identify deforestation. For example, in Amazonas, we have areas where I can't get to in less than 15 days. So if I locate a uh, outbreak of deforestation, I still have to take 15 days to fight this deforestation and local. I cannot keep a team 15 to 20 days on that site. I can't even get to that site via helicopter. So I have to have a technical um, real-time monitoring. The line of action number two is a territorial integrated source of intelligence with a platform of procedures. For example, a state police officer of Amazonas, if they are located in the border with Rondônia, they cannot fight a environmental crime that they are seeing in the border with uh, Rondônia because they cannot uh, have the a weapon. So I have to find a way to streamline this kind of bureaucracy. This, we have to have cooperation 
between police forces and the same idea can be taken to the border patrols. We have to uh, have exchange in environmental cooperation and we also have a raising of investments and payment for environmental services. This is another important piece of data. This platform is not only for command and control, but also to find alternatives so that we can foster the payment for environmental services, both for the uh, family farmers that need to keep 80% of their legal reserves and the surplus of that legal reserve is not non-remunerated. The payment for environmental services can cooperate a lot in those areas. And we can also have jurisdictional systems that can help a lot focusing on the implementation. Line of action number three is fighting against environmental illegal actions. We are going to use the consortium to improve public uh, procurement. We're going to have a team uh, to fight against the illegal fires. We're going to have the organization of an interstate task force that can work together, especially in the borders, working uh, in assistance to the federal teams. We're going to deploy interinstitutional bases that can work uh, between the borders. It's an interstate force that can work together and it can be trained together and they can work against these issues. We will have an integrated strategic communication plan and we're going to have regional trainings. We have good examples of fighting against deforestation in the Amazon especially in Mato Grosso and Pará. And we have a huge challenge, which is being able to compensate the regional differences that the states have. We talk about Amazonas, Pará, Mato Grosso, but we're also talking about Rondônia, Acre, Tocantins, Maranhão, Amapá. So we're going to elevate the level of work in these states. We're going to elevate the level of equipment, software, so that we can have a single result for all of them. This was validated by the governors in the last meeting in September. We're going to commit to increasing 15% of the actions by the states in the prevention and fighting against deforestation and fires. We're going to increase 50% of the action of the states regarding the policies of sustainable production and bioeconomy. And the states are going to allocate 5 million to the new initiatives and the policies in the bioeconomy. The states of the Amazon are committed to reducing the illegal deforestation. We are committed as well with a strong bioeconomy in the Amazon region. We have a strong conserved forest. We have 97% of conserved forest area. At the same time, we have a strong struggle to reduce poverty in all nine states of the region. So there's no dichotomy between environmental conservation and find paths for production and increase of economy in these areas. So we cannot fight against deforestation without fighting against poverty. In the agenda of the UN for sustainable development, the first SDG is poverty reduction. So we're, what we're talking about here is answering the 
2030 goals fully, including eradicating poverty. I'm going to finish my presentation with the reaffirmation of the pact, of the SDG pacts to be announced here at the SCOF 27. This is the message that we secretaries would like to convey here at COP 27. We have to find paths to grow low environmental impact activities and low emission activities, talking and conversing with the environmental licensing to organize such an important strategic area in Brazil. We have to separate this discussion only by talking about environmental protection. We cannot forget about reducing poverty. If we don't talk about these two things together, we're not going to advance in one thing or another. So that's what we're trying to do with the strength of the states of legal Amazon. Thank you very much. Davira is very skillful with his words. And he talked about communication. We have to skillfully communicate what's happening in Brazil, internationally or within Brazil. And before I give the floor to you, Governor, I wanted to highlight the, the need of establishing partnerships, cooperation. We are only together here because we had this partnership with the partners with the Embassy of France in Brazil, with the contribution of France and and GIZ and IPAM for us to have this robust product. So I'd like to ask you, Governor, the state of Mato Grosso is a reference in Brazil in terms of fighting deforestation. Several initiatives were developed at the REM program and other state uh, initiatives that improved the efficiency in the state. How do you notice this opportunity to for the consortium to contribute with the sharing of tools and knowledge that were built in your state with other states in previous uh, in a previous step in this process good morning everyone i'd like to greet you all here secretaries of environment in the different uh, states of the Amazon, our partner in this panel. In the state of Mato Grosso for some years, but especially after 2019, we structured this environmental policy that at the end could fulfill the requirements of the Brazilian law. That must be our reference so that we can within our country and with the world discuss what we're seeing in the environment, especially in the Brazilian Amazon. We cannot accept that other interests are put at the forefront because the, the interest of the Brazilian people and the environment should come first, and we should provide environmental services to the planet, and this is necessary that we all do that. In the state of Mato Grosso, we've implemented a policy of monitoring and control that could be able to answer quickly so that we could prevent environmental damages and damages against the Brazilian law. We have a policy and we've been working strongly with this policy to fight illegal deforestation. All of us know and some around the world are, are understanding that now that the Brazilian law is one of, of the most restrictive law to protect the environment and our tropical forest. If it's a very strict law, 
it's not so valid if you are not able to comply and execute this law. So what the state of Mato Grosso did was to create mechanisms with satellite images that could in real time identify any type of uh, environment violation that was not authorized uh, by the body and within the limits of the Brazilian law. So in our state, in a practical way, we were able to detect in 24 to 48 hours any change in our biomes, whether Amazon forest or Cerrado, that is greater than one hectare. After we identify, we have some actions that, that we automatically start. The, the responsible for that register receives an email. Someone from the call center will call the landowner to say, I'm seeing that in your farm after that gate to the left, you have a deforestation activity and that's not authorized. So people are even surprised by that. They say, wow, they look, they look to the skies to see from where they're observing them. So it's very interesting to see that people were even surprised with this quick response. When they started this process of violation, the state was there. So acting quickly brings the possibility of changing one of the greatest problems that we have in Brazil and maybe in the world, which is the perception of impunity. And even the lack of ability of the state to identify and then punish the infractors. For many years in Brazil, in, uh, in the recent history, a few decades ago, Brazilians were taken to the Amazon region with the duty of uh, opening new spaces with deforestation to occupy that territory. In the 70s, a uh, little more than 40 years ago, there was a motto that was uh, disseminated in the country, which was Amazon, let's integrate it not to give it in. So the Brazilians that were invited many years ago, and for many years that was a historic process, the world must uh, know that and recognize that cultural processes won't change overnight. As, the, as our diet, or our religious pattern, they're built over centuries, decades. And changing that is very complex. It's a set of factors, and they necessarily, encompass what Talavera just said. If we are uh, poor people in the Amazon, pe vulnerable people who are not able to to take their livelihood from other activities, they will be prone to practice this kind of, of crime, either in the Amazon or in the different favelas all around Brazil and Latin America and all around the world. There's a percentage of the population that is willing to practice illegal activities due to poverty. We've been to Istanbul, very beautiful city, very well known, visited by millions of people. And you see, see hundreds of stores trading products, which are forged, counterfeit, and it's an illegal activity because selling this kind of product is illegal. Why aren't they able to fight this, this illegal activity? Why in Europe to commercialize a chemical products uh, the, for human con con consumption is practiced. It's illegal, but I'm sure that in Europe, the, the governments are 
trying to fight this kind of illegal activity. So what should be clear to the world is that the states in the, uh, in the Amazon that are represented by the legal Amazon consortium, we are making an effort to fight this kind of illegal activities that some Brazilians insist to practice. And the work developed by the consortium, by the legal Amazon consortium, this work of monitoring that is advancing and in general, all the states are taking measures. We are happy enough to have been able to implement not only this system, but the set of actions. In the last years, we have, we have seized more than 400 pieces of equipment. We removed tractors. We noticed from the monitoring that there is an illegal activity. Only a few pieces of equipment are uh, seized. We only do that when the Brazilian law enables us to do so. So in our country and in our Amazon region, and when we talk about environment at this crop, or when we talk about environment in the world, the Amazon is very relevant. Our environment, is comprised by several biomes in Brazil, a huge country in this huge planet. When we talk about the Amazon, we are talking about Latin America, not only Brazil. We cannot only talk about the Amazon forest. We have to talk about the tropical forest all around the world and in other countries as well, because they also have important biomes. But we noticed that the Amazon and the Brazilian context is very relevant because at the same time, it's associated to our environmental power and our ability that we also have to produce food. And that inserts us in a different game, different international game of the great market of commodities, food commodities. So when you associate the environmental interest with other economic interests, this game starts creating some debate, some other interests, mixing different goals. And we then, we assume that the environment is at the forefront when many times the other economic interests are at the forefront. We Brazilians, we are concerned with the environment and it must be clear that there are two great parameters for us to maintain our objectives and focus. In the north of, in our Mato Grosso and our in our legal Amazon, because I've been talking to, to some governors with, and almost all of them converge that we are going to depend from the Brazilian, on the Brazilian law. We defend that the Brazilian law should be the only parameter for the legal Amazon. We should be stricter and stricter in our monitoring and control activities. We have to work with this other pillar so that we can create the conditions that the Brazilians who live in this region have the ability to develop with other alternatives because opening the forest to plant or to raise uh, cattle or any other activity is not the only alternative that they might have. If we do that in an efficient way, if the world, instead of criticizing and proposing, uh, instead of criticizing and proposing sanctions, could help us, in fact, we could improve in this goal, so that we could find a balance point that could serve the people living in the Amazon, the environment, and the growth of our country. In our state of Mato Grosso, for instance, in the last four years. We have issued environmental fines in more than 9 billion reais. That's 
practically one billion eight hundred million dollars in environmental fines. And what's worse is that these fines are quickly processed with our procedures for this activity in the country. If they do not appeal, it goes. Uh, they go to the the debtor list, and they are penalized due to this environmental infraction. So we will keep going with that. I'm sure that every one of us from the Amazon, we are going to do everything which is possible and necessary so that we can comply with this Brazilian environmental law. And because this is so restrictive, it's creating some difficulties for the compliance. It, other regions in the world do not have this kind of problem because they didn't create such a legislation. We are going to see very few examples in the, the planet which are similar to the Brazilian law. The stricter you are, the more difficult it is to get the compliance from the citizens. The more you increase taxes, the more you have problems of evasion. This example is well known. That's why many people, many countries diminish their taxes to diminish the evasion. And in the, in the environmental uh, area, it's not different. Our law is very strict, and that's why it's hard to be complied with. There are other biomes in which the legislation is more flexible. So you don't see so much difficulty in these biomes because maintaining 25% of the preserved area is easy. And some in some biomes in our country, that's how it works. And in most areas in the world, that's, that's how it works. But when you say to the citizen, you have 1,000 hectares, but you can only uh, use 200, you have to be responsible for 800 others and you should you 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 shouldn't let illegal activities happen there so that's that is that is felt with resistance because it's much harder to comply and in most countries they are not even close to that but regardless of that, it's our law. And in the legal Amazon, we are going to have our law as our reference and the, z the zero illegal uh, deforestation is still our objective. Governor, thank you so much for your words. I believe you have a clear message. No to illegal activities, fighting the illegal deforestation with the social and economical uh, development with some global suggestion. Let's harmonize the, the legislation. Unfortunately, we won't have the company of Mr. Pierre. You have a bilateral meeting and people were waiting for you. So I'd like to thank you. And I would like to give you the opportunity for this last comment. Thank you. Thank you very much for the invitation. Thank you, Governor, for those uh, very interesting uh, Uh, of the Amazon. We must not forget that 34 million people live in the Amazon region, and we can't treat the forest problem without dealing with the people and taking care of the people as you are doing. And fighting against illegal deforestation is the key element, and we are going to try to work together because it's important for Brazil, it's important for the all Latin America and for the planet. So thank you very much for your contribution, for what you are doing. And we, if we can, with our European Union partners and others, members of the Alliance for the Conservation of Rainforest, we will work with you in order to build together for a better Amazon for the planet and for all, our, all of us. Thank you very much. Mucho obrigado.
Bom, agora encerrando o painel, a gente vai ter Now, um... we are going to, to wrap up with this video from Mato Grosso and some of the lessons will be presented. Governor, please, and Mr. Itavira, please take your seat. Congratulations on your words. Fighting illegal deforestation in Mato Grosso. Facing climate change calls for actions to protect the environment and fight illegal deforestation. Geospatial technology is a major ally as planet satellite constellation is used to capture premier high resolution images of the Mato Grosso state on a daily basis. Planet images are used by the SCCon platform to provide alerts of deforestation across the state with speed, precision and traceability. A territory equivalent to France and Germany combined contains three of the most important biomes in the country. Upon detecting a change in vegetation and potential environmental crime, the Yassicom platform triggers an alert and an email is sent to the landowner. The Environment Agency cross-checks the data. If the activity hasn't been authorized, the landowner is notified both in writing and over the phone. State inspection agents are also dispatched to the deforested area to issue a notice, impound equipment, place an embargo on the land, and take legal action against the parties involved. The numbers show that the strategies, processes, and zero tolerance policy for environmental crime yield results. The efficiency rate for alert responses and notification of transgressors has skyrocketed 600% in Mato Grosso. Vigilance is the price to be paid for preservation and sustainable production. Mato Grosso conserves, Mato Grosso produces. Muito bem, muito bem. Então, Alô, muito bem. Agora, eu vou agora meu Vitor Very good. I'm going to invite now my colleague Vitor Salvati for the second round about solutions for the sustainable development in the Amazon. Vitor, please. Good morning. 